everyone. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Let's do a quick tweet. I've been bad about these lately. Let's let everybody know where the action is. Beep. I do have coffee. Why does this sound so low? Oh, there we go. Couldn't hear it before. And I was so confuzzled. Anyways. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hello. Um, if I at some point today uh, get up and you're like, they sitting on a uh, on a sweater. I sure am. I sure am sitting on a sweater because my cat decided that it would be the perfect place to yak. <laughs> so there was a big hairball on the chair maybe like half an hour ago and I was like okay that's fine it's whatever I try to use like the lines on the bookshelf as sort of a guide for like where is typically a good level for the webcam but sometimes it's different. So, what are you gonna do? Anyways, hi everybody, welcome. Happy Monday. Which kitty? Oh, definitely Watson. Definitely Watson. Also, remember how I was like, um, Remember how I was saying that uh, one of the chickens just laid an egg in the middle of the yard? <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> um, so this morning, the chickens were all doing their, like, their, their scream singing, like, as though one of the chickens was laying an egg. And I looked outside and none of them... None of them were in the coop. And I was like... Where the fuck are you ladies? Who's laying an egg? Not in the coop right now. And they all ran out looking super guilty. And I looked all over the place and did not find an egg, but I was like, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> ladies, which one of you bitches is coming out here trying to lay an egg in the middle of the yard? Um, so, sorry to do this again, but I might, we're going to see how Sam feels. I might have to end stream a little early today to pick up our kiddo because, um, Sam woke up at like 10 AM and felt like shit. I went back to bed. I was like, maybe I'll sleep it off. I went back to bed and woke up again at like noon and was like, still feel like shit I'm gonna try to eat something so we got some quick like McDonald's breakfast and I don't know how much of it he ate but it wasn't long before he came upstairs like nope <laughs> I'm going back to bed I can't do it today so uh, letting him sleep we'll see how he feels when he wakes up but I said that I was totally down to end like 30 minutes early so I can get our kiddo so, I know, poor Sam. Homeboy cannot stay healthy. It's hard to stay healthy in a house with a little kid. It just kind of is what it is. But, you know. Just like, oh, come on. The universe. So, 
I know why you're all here. Why is the title called Orange Glass? I'm so glad that you asked. I had said that I was gonna try a, a project where you take glass and you coat it with a mixture of um, Mod Podge and uh, uh, food coloring. This is something I saw a while back and it's more and more like, like DIYers <laughs> are starting to do it. And I was like, okay, okay. I think I'm starting to like get an idea of, of what like makes it look good in the end, right? Because some of them were looking real streaky and I was like, I really don't want mine to look streaky. So what do I gotta do? So I just kind of like the people who nailed it, I tried to just mimic what they did. Um, and it turned out really good. I did it with one of my big vases, which I probably should have done it with something small first, but um, it's it's just like a really, it's a really light effect for this one. I, I um, didn't put too much orange coloring in it. So it's not like orange, orange. It's just kind of tinted orange. Um, I'm curious what would happen if I did a second coat of it. If I wanted it to be darker, say that now that I've seen it, I'm like, hmm, I could, I would be down for this to be orange -er, right? Uh, if that, if it would go well with me, like doing the whole baking and stuff, it's on the inside. So basically you mix Mod Podge and food coloring and like a little bit of water and you mix, 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 mix. Uh, and a lot of people said the more that you mix it, the less streaky the final product is. So I mix, 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 mixed. Um, and then you pour it into whatever it is you want to color. And then you basically just do this, like just rotate it and kind of like, you know, eh, rotate, rotate eh, until it, the whole thing is coated. And then you turn it upside down and let it, let the excess drip out. Um, I didn't want there to be, I saw some people had like, like really crusty, <laughs> like the top bit here got really crusty. Cause you could tell like it had dripped to the bottom and then just kind of sat there. Um, my friend thinks you're a dude. I, that's fine. Um, and so, uh, I tried to like lift it up occasionally and like move it to another spot to let it like drip a little bit more, lift it, drip a little bit more, lift it. Right. Um, so the one thing that I will say is that, uh, I wish that, um, I had maybe cleaned this a bit better because when you coat it with the paint, if there's any anything that you had left in there, any like dirt, grime, whatever that was in there, the paint is just gonna coat it and make it so that it doesn't go anywhere, right? So there's like an itty, I didn't see this at first, but there's like an itty bit, you can't see it on camera. There's like an itty bitty bit of dirt here and it's now coated and sealed forever in, in Mod Podge and paint, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, uh, that it's very clean, right? Um, and at the bottom, it's sort of like any, any that hadn't fully dripped out um, sort of collected in the bottom creases, which I think is fine. Like, I think it's kind of a nice effect for the bottom to be even a little bit more intense in color than, than the top bit, right? I think that's that looks fine. So, um, yeah. I think that it turned out really well. It was a super, super easy project. Highly recommend. Uh, I think I'll try to coat this a second time. But a lot of the a lot of uh, the projects said do like a couple scoops of Mod Podge mixed with like 12 drops of food coloring, and the food coloring that I was using I I didn't know how concentrated or strong it was going to be, so I only used like six. So this is with like half the amount of food coloring that they suggested. Um, so I think if I had done the full amount, it would probably be a much stronger orange color. So if this, if you like this, just like light tint look, just do half. Um, but you'll notice in a lot of the DIYs for this project, they turn out much, much more vibrant. So, so yeah, it's fun. I like it. Big fan. I have a bunch of like old wine bottles that I haven't done anything with. And I'm like, I should just get some like... Do some of them orange, maybe some of them black or like, um, 
there's a lot of, for whatever reason, there's a lot of Halloween, like spooky season stuff this year that's like this really um, kind of, I don't want to say minty. It's not quite minty. It's like a really light turquoisey color. And so I've been kind of like rolling with that because I have a lot of stuff that's that color anyway in my house. Um, so yeah, I might just like grab a bunch of the glass stuff that I've kept that I haven't really found a project for. Oh yeah, that's the other big thing is don't put water in this. This is no longer food safe or even water safe. You can't put water in this. It'll ruin it. Mod Podge and water are not best friends. <laughs> but um, dried flowers, I think would be totally fine to put in something like this or like, you know, just any anything that you don't intend to eat. It's for decor, basically. You could put fairy lights in it, that's true. A good point from Telly. Water with Mod Podge. Any of you who have ever done like the coasters that are coated in Mod Podge, you'll notice if you put something that has a lot of condensation on it on top of the coaster, where the condensation was, the Mod Podge um, starts to take on more of that opaque quality again. It kind of undoes some of the solidifying of the Mod Podge. So, this, I think if you put like a little bit of water in it, this would probably turn more opaque again. It might go back to normal, but it might, it might not. So, so yeah. If you're somebody who just hoards glass things and you have some that are in interesting shapes and you're like, man, I've never used these for anything. Um, or like old vases that, this vase I never use because even though Sam really likes getting me flowers, which is very sweet. Um, most of the time, because it has this like tapered top, you can't fit that many flowers in it, right? Which is why I'm like, I could put a few dried things in here. I think that would look really nice. Or yeah, maybe fairy lights, who knows? But this, this vase specifically never gets used really, so. So yeah. Fun little, fun little decorative project. Did I show you guys the, the like batting that Clarkie and I made? I can't remember. Oh yeah, I talked about it on, um, I talked about it on Instagram and stuff. Yeah, Clarkie and I also made a a thing to go on the window and she was like we need to make like 10 more of these <laughs> so i need to get the stuff to make a bunch more of them maybe for tomorrow our little niece um is having surgery um on her on her little tummy baby girl so i thought that it would be a really fun project for me to like, get back into the swing of of um sewing to make her, her and Clarky are like really close, um, to make them matching nighties. Cause she's gonna have to basically just be in pajamas for a while. So I was like, oh, maybe we make her, make her a little nighty and she and Clarky could have matching ones. I think that would be really cute. So uh, I'm gonna go to the fabric store with my mother-in-law this week at some point, I think and try to pick out some fabric. Our little niece, she's like a little bit younger than Clarky. But she had a um, she had a hard birth um, and she's needed surgery, but like they needed to, it's not like dangerous. Like what's, what's going on with her isn't super dangerous. So they were like, we'll just wait until she's bigger because then the surgery will have a greater chance of success, etc. Um, so yeah, so that's finally happening. So I was like, I don't know what to do for them. Cause I was like, I could make you guys dinner and drop it off and whatever else. And they were like, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So. So I'm going to make the matching nighties. <laughs> I think that would be a cute gift.
and Clark really loves being a, a fairy, which is the what we refer to when um, when we like drop off gifts and then run away. Um, so like yesterday, my mother-in-law wasn't feeling super great, so we made soup for dinner and made some extra and dropped it off for my mother-in-law. So Clarky got to be a soup fairy, and she was very excited. And so she can she can be a pajama fairy. <laughs> She could be a pajama fairy next week. Hi, Rush. Good morning. Yeah, she loves it. But we got caught. My mother, my mother-in-law caught us. She always does. And she, um, she was like, Clarky, Clarky, you gotta come back because I have a gift for you. And Clark was like, oh and ran back and my mother-in-law got her like the perfect gift for her. It's like this little plastic thing. I bet I could find it, but it's like this little plastic thing like this big that has a top that you can flip back and forth and it's different like magnification levels. And it's for putting bugs in. So you can put bugs inside of it and then put the top on and you, it'll magnify the bug. So, uh, so we were putting like spiders and slugs and all all kinds of things in there. <laughs> we were like, this is gonna need to get cleaned often. <laughs> but she loves it. It currently has like four feathers inside. You're like, ooh, what kind of feathers are they? Are they angel feathers? Are they fairy feathers? And she was like, it could be a goose feather. <laughs> we were like, that's very true. It could be a goose feather. She was like, because gooses are white. It's like, yes, they are. Thank you for being the realist in this situation, Clarky. <laughs> She's like, guys, no. It's not a fairy or an angel. Occam's razor. It's probably a goose. <laughs> I've been invited to Pixelmon. I'm not sure if I'll if I'm really gonna be able to play though. Cause the two days that they've played so far, I've had D and D and then have needed to just go to bed immediately. And I'm like, I don't know when I would play. Like tonight is always my 6040 meeting. Tomorrow is um, super cousin time. So like I think there's just like too much in the way, really. anything to report for 6040. It's all boring stuff. It's a lot of like script development and um, you know game outlines and things like that. 6040 is the game company that Jesse Cox and I started. But we've got like quite a few projects that have all been started and so they're all in different stages of development basically yeah that's all that I'm gonna say for for that no information beyond that, but I'm glad that you're all very interested in what we're doing. <laughs> it was pouring rain this morning. I put Clark in her like in her like rain outfit. And then, um, and now the sun's out. <laughs> and I'm sure she's furious. <laughs> like my mom made me wear my rain outfit. 
It's not even raining anymore. It wasn't it wasn't super rainy or windy last night, but we woke up to a lot of wind, like really loud wind. Um, so Clarky had come into my bed at like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., something like that. Uh, I think because it was so loud in her room. In Scotland, we can get all four seasons in a day. Yeah. told um during the last misdemeanor episode no spoilers for it but we were told during the last misdemeanor episode that um uh that we only have like four sessions left it's fine <laughs> so all of us are like okay that's cool that's fine I was talking with Summer this morning because I was like, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort out end game for Alice, basically. Even though I know that Alice can like continue to do stuff in the world because we've got like the hub zone now. I'm still very sad. Only four sessions to become immortal. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> he was saying that he felt the worst about talking to us about it. <laughs> Brett. He was like, cause you know, you guys are all like, we're a family. And now I have to be like, it's, it's over now. <laughs> tufting gun though. I don't know why you're talking about a tufting gun, but I do love a tufting gun. It'll be good. Basically, like, there's a lot of, like, side quest stuff that people can do now. Um, and so there's stuff that I can do as Alice even after Misdemeanor's done. Um, I'm just... That was one of those hot mic moments. Oh, the Tufting Gun stuff. I see what you're saying. So far in my office, I've found 
two stray pieces of my puzzle from the catening. And now I'm so worried that there are other pieces just hiding somewhere in this room. <laughs> At least the only place this puzzle has ever been opened is in this room. So if I can't, if at the end I can't find a piece, I'll know to just rip this room apart and I'll find it. Check the vacuum. I have not vacuumed in here yet. Haha. <laughs> I can see behind the desk. I've looked I've looked back there, don't worry. <laughs> Play any more games this weekend? I played more Kana. I don't know how long that game is, but um, I did play more Kana. That game is very good. Um, and I've been playing a little bit of Poker Quest off and on. I still haven't hopped back into Eastward. I want to, but. Eight to 12 hours. Kana is? Oh, it's not that bad. No. Honestly, out of everything I've played the last couple of weeks, Deathloop was the least interesting to me. But again, I was, I was when I was giving my like feedback on that, before um i tried to be sure to say like part of that is because i'm not like super into shooters you know and the game at the end of the day is more of a shooter than anything <laughs> um but uh, i also feel like the pacing of it is a little weird at least at the beginning I started playing Hades recently. Oh my God, you're in for a wild ride. One of the best games ever made. <laughs> uh, I don't schedule out the games. I don't I don't decide ahead of time, like what are all the games we're gonna try playing this week. Um, but... <laughs> uh, today we're playing Pawn Barian, which should be ridiculous. Uh, we have Signal State to still look at. Um, I can't recall if Potion Quest has now actually come out. Or Potion Craft, I mean. It's early access. So I've wanted to play that. Yeah, so there's stuff. Somebody said my hair is very 90s Leo, <laughs> which makes me laugh, but I, I see it. It's me, Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know it yet, but I'm gonna spend many years of my life trying to get an award. <laughs> It's the sw yeah, it's the sw it's it's the swoop with the little like this little bit here. Can you say some Titanic quotes? No, I don't. <laughs> 
think the only lines that I know from Titanic are Rose lines. Never let go, Jack. I don't know. I don't know anything that Jack says. Draw me like one of your French cats. <laughs> hey, it's me, Jackie. <laughs> Drowns. There we go. I did it. Those are my two my two quotes. <laughs> like Titanic Titanic in five seconds it's just but this ship can't sink and then just the ship sinking and that's it that's the whole video and for some reason it's so funny real and accurate. <sighs> it's five second films. The video is 11 seconds long though. Is it 11 seconds long because of an intro and an outro? Man, five second films was Vine before Vine existed. <laughs> Iconic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Telly helped me find a color for my hair. So. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> I think I've changed up what I want to do with it, though. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have a different idea, I think, maybe. Same colors, though, same like it's like a really, so Telly showed me a really dark, like red based purple. So I'm gonna get that for most of it. And then the like tangerine grapefruity color. Um, I think, cause I've wanted to do this for a while. I've talked about doing it for a while, but I wanna do like a really small nape undercut. It's by a small one because I don't have that much hair to work with. Just a really small, like, like triangle shape undercut. Um, dye that the tangerine color, the like buzzed hair there. So when I put my hair up, it'll be like this like shock of orange in the back, which will be cool, I think. And then a little bit of orange in here, I think. So part of, part of the swoop of my hair has orange. I think that would be cool. I also think it'll be easier for me to do myself. <laughs> Not the shaving part. I'll need help for that, but. <laughs> Clark can help. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she could, she could help. <laughs> All day yesterday was Clark doing things. 
and me saying, do you need help with that? And her getting so angry with me for even asking. Just furious, just so mad at the idea that she couldn't do it herself. Like, no, I can't do it by myself. <laughs> Great. I remember acting like that when I was a kid. Oh my God. It's so much. So independent. Yeah, it's a ponytail. Beek -a -beek -a -beek -a. I was like that when I was trying to learn to ride a bicycle. The thing right now is it's not that I have a problem with her <laughs> doing things herself and learning how to do things herself. I think that that's great. My issue is the way that she reacts to me asking if she needs help, right? So we've had to have conversations like daily recently that are like, honey, all you've got to say is no thank you. No thank you, mommy. I can do it by myself. No thank you. Please let me do it by myself, right? But what happens is she's trying to do a thing and we're fine. Nothing's elevated. She doesn't seem frustrated. Everything's fine. I notice that there's something she's struggling with. And I'll say, would you like help? Or I'll say, would you like me to show you how to do that? And it's zero to 60, like, no! <laughs> and I have to be like, honey, we don't got to talk to each other that way. I wasn't yelling. Nothing was going on. Literally all you got to say <laughs> is, no, thank you. And I will listen, right? Like, I'll listen to you. I don't think that I've ever given you reason to think I won't listen if you just say, no thanks. Like, <laughs> Jesus. So, um, that's our current thing that we're working on is uh, when somebody asks if you need help, maybe don't scream at them. That's a weird reaction. <laughs> could be picked up from other kids. I think it's normal. I think it's a natural, like, kids are learning how to do stuff, you know? So I think it's fine. <laughs> I like this jazz in the background, but yeah. Again, fortunately, like, we don't yell at her. We don't hit her. We don't do any of that. So in those moments, it is really easy to be like, mommy and daddy don't yell at each other. Mommy doesn't yell at Clarky. Daddy doesn't yell at Clarky, right? So we would really appreciate it if you didn't yell at us because it hurts our feelings, right? And that's why we don't do it to you and why we don't do it to each other because it hurts feelings. And she gets that, but in the moment, she still is just like, I cannot believe this bitch is suggesting that maybe I don't know how to do Velcro. <laughs> like I need help with Velcro, this piece of shit, disrespected in my own house. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> Unreal. Like, that's literally the vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Parenting's hard. There are so many times. Oh my god. We had, a, we had actually a really rough morning yesterday. Um, and I was crying and Clark was crying and Sam came downstairs and was like, what the fuck? Do we all need cuddles? What's happening? <laughs> you know, it happens.
I saw Pawn Barian on stream and I thought it looked like a good Dodger game. Yes. Of course, yeah. Sam provided cuddles and I was like, I'm gonna go take a shower. I went upstairs, I literally stayed up there for like an hour. <laughs> I just like laid on the bed for a while, sat on my phone, read some murder bot, which by the way is very good. Read some murder bot, took a long shower, got out of the shower, was like, okay, now it's time to make soup. We don't have enough cauliflower. So I came downstairs and I was like, I'm going to the store. He was like, okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, Sam and I, uh, big, big height difference. <laughs> Soup. Sainsbury's or Greg's? Uh, neither. Yeah, Murderbot's good. They're, they're little novellas, so they're pretty short. Um, I started the first one and it's pretty fun. It had a slow start for me. The start was a lot of like, a lot of description that I got kind of lost in the sauce on. But once once it got to the point where it was like, this is what's happening in this book, I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> No, at the store? No, there's no problems getting stuff at the store, at least where I live. It's all just like a, the the issue is diesel and petrol, right? Yeah, I made um the butternut cauliflower soup that I posted in our Discord. It's very good. And we have some leftover, Ooh, baby. No, there's no, no, this is the thing, is apparently there's no shortage. People are just panic buying diesel and petrol. So <laughs> it's not that there's a shortage of those things. It's that places are running out rapidly because people are panic buying it. Yeah, there wasn't an issue. There is now. Anyways. Yeah, we don't have that much diesel left in the car. So I'm like, what's the plan? <laughs> I guess I guess we stick to like just only getting and dropping off Clark and not do anything else because we just don't we don't have the diesel for it. Good thing we already went grocery shopping. Clark enjoyed nursery. Oh yeah, she loves it. She has two little best friends. Um, she's learning how to write, which is very fun. So yeah, she's good. She's happy. <laughs> Matt is not one of her best friends, no. Even though, even though that isn't the kid's real name, I really feel like we shouldn't make it a habit of like harping on, like hating on a little kid. <laughs> so I'm gonna redirect us to not talking about Matt. <laughs> Matt 
Danny. It's Danny. He's just done a big move. He's crushing it. What's Clark's favorite activity or hobby at nursery? All I know is that she refuses to come inside. That's every day when we pick her up. They're like, yeah, she just stayed outside all day. She basically would not come in. <laughs> so. I'm very tired still. I'm not surprised. Moves are exhausting. Did I get a new desk? No, this is an old, so this was the original desk that we had when we moved. When we moved, we bought, this is a, a small dining table that we bought for like 15 bucks. Uh, because when we moved here, we didn't have any furniture. And so um, we kept it because I kept saying, oh, I'll use it for a craft table. And so when we moved to this house, I had this desk and the, the like office desk next to each other, but swapped. Um, so this one was over there and that one was over here. And I realized at a certain point, like this would be much better for me to have my computer on because that one's made of plastic and it'll be easier to clean when I'm doing craft stuff. So that's a much better craft table. And also my bookshelves are wood. So we would have like more wood things. So yeah, I just swapped them. So it's not new. It's actually the oldest thing that we own. <laughs> new to you no it's the first thing that we had when we moved here so old to me new to you the viewer maybe <laughs> also to anybody who missed it look i mean i'm turned glass orange okay there we go now the title makes sense for anybody who showed up late <laughs> But why? Cause it's cause it's cause it's fucking spooky season, and I want orange shit. Because I don't do anything with this, so I made it. I tinted it orange. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I worked hard. <laughs> Sam doesn't get you enough flowers. You also missed the, the talk about that. Sam gets me shit tons of flowers. More flowers than I ever really want, to be honest. This vase is terrible for a bouquet of flowers. Can you tell why? It tapers. How many flowers can you fit in this? <laughs> so it's just not great for if you have a partner that likes to buy you flowers. It's just not the right shape for that shit. So I'm gonna get some dried flowers and put them in there because this is only decorative now. Water can't go in it. So I'm gonna get some dried shit, some dead stuff and put it inside. Just one very tall flame. Yeah, it could be. Or you could do what Telly said and put some fairy lights in it, which would also be very cute. I do love a biome. I do I do love a little terrarium. So yeah. Um next step is to decide if I want to try to make it darker or not. It's very pretty like this. So I think I'll probably leave it and then maybe use the exact same food coloring and do double the amount of food coloring in that one and see if I can just make one that's like this same color but darker and put them together. That might be really cute. We'll see.
But yeah, I'm a glass hoarder. If a glass thing comes into this house, I will keep it. And some glass things just don't immediately have uses. Anything with a lid probably has a use, um, unless it's a wine bottle. I keep wine bottles and there's not really much to do with those. But the, the, <laughs> the wine glass bottle cutter showed up so I can cut the top off of some of them. And now I know how to dye them a different color. So we can combine projects, you know? Oh, I thought about keeping bees. No, thank you. I love bees. I love bees for the world. I would love to um, plant lots of flowers that bees enjoy and like. And that's it. <laughs> You should do an IRL stream this week. You mean like not in this room? Is that what you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, we could do it on a study hall. We do, we have a worm bin, but it's not doing well. The worms are sad. So I feel like we need to start over with them. <laughs> I know, my poor wormies. <sighs> It's very Dodger to get emotionally connected to worms. They were in my care. They were in my care. And I didn't provide them the, the world that they needed. Mites ate a ton of them, which is really sad. It's normal, I guess. Apparently it's very normal for like a first time like worm composter, a verma composter, if you will. But I'm still upset about it. Worms need more than dirt. Yeah, they got They need shit to eat. <laughs> the Lomi Kickstarter. Does it have to do with loam? Turn waste to compost with a single button. I'll look into this later. <laughs> I'll look at it later. <laughs> yeah. It's been a bummer because like a lot of stuff we can feed to the chickens, but not everything. Um, so we keep winding up with, like, overflow of stuff, and we'll be like, oh, fuck, if only the worms, if only the worms were doing well. But if we put food in there, it feeds the mites, and we're trying to, like, kill the mites, right? So... Yeah, Jesse and I still want to play Life is Strange. We just need to find a time for it. He actually texted me being like, hey, when are you free? So. Have I ever worked a healthcare job? No. Um, my sister's whole family works in ER, 
but I've never I've never done anything like that. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks guys. It's just it's time zones. There's so there's so many things that would be sorted by time zones not being a thing, but that's not the world we live in. So I'm trying to figure out when he and I can sync up to do things um, is hard because the window's small. Sup, I'm Ash from the Lux City. Space lizards, I'm sorry. LDR sads are for roll. <sighs> what about Merlwib, my queen? Oh, Jesse thirsting after Merlwib. Understandable, because again. A queen. <laughs> Most of us have good taste. There was a video of Amrig's voice actor reading a children's story or something, and it was good. Amazing. I remember, like, when all of that first came out. Heaven's Word, right, is when you first meet Amrig. And so many people that I knew were just like, Yo, who's this voice actor though? <laughs> oh my gosh, actually, that just reminded me. I think tomorrow I won't be able to stream because I think tomorrow is like a secret look at Endwalker that I was invited to. Now that we're talking about this. I'll have to double check that. But I think I think that's the case. I need to get into 14. I have it installed and everything. Oh my gosh, yeah, get into it. Now's the time. Now's the time. And Walker's coming. <laughs> Not so secret anymore. It was secret. I mean, I don't think it's a secret that it's happening. What happens on it is the secret. <laughs> you goofballs. I know, I spoiled everything. Guys, there's an expansion, it's called Endwalker. <sighs> there's new classes, it's, I can't believe that I broke an NDA <laughs> by saying all of this.
Did I tell you guys I'm gonna I'm gonna try uh, embroidering on this? It's fading so fast. I do love I do love when designs on things fade. Like my um my uh Vim sweatshirt is just a fucking disaster at this point. Like you can barely tell that it's a a tiefling on that sweater. But I love it. It just it looks so worn in, you know. Um I've had this like Sam got me this for my birthday. <laughs> it's fading so much. So I've been reading that hoodie this whole time is mime is life. Mime is life. Oh yeah. Mime is life. <laughs> That's what it should be. My, my. <laughs> Vim as in the text editor? Vim as in uh, a tiefling character in a D&D &D game. <laughs> that makes much more sense, yeah. Vigor released um, uh, sweatshirts with the character on it. Uh, and the proceeds went toward um, uh, like suicide prevention organizations. So, so I bought one. <laughs> Some people may think "Mime is Life" is a good shirt. Look, I wish this said "Mime is Life." <laughs> As a person who has never seen a mime in my life. <laughs> Really, you know, it was just really like, why do I have that? <laughs> Who knows? Sometimes cheap shirts here have random English words on them, kind of like that. <gasps> oh, Marianne. <laughs> you can make a sweater that says Mime is Life. idea for you. You're welcome. <sighs> I forgot I was gonna... I forgot that I was gonna try chicken and milk today. <laughs> I was gonna try chicken and milk. I forgot. What all does that entail? Wait. Could I do that on a break? How much time does this take? That's not the slow cooker. Sage, my sage plant is dead. <laughs> Might not be able to do this. Apparently supposed to have sage. I don't have sage. Look, chat's the one who was like, you gotta try chicken and milk, it's incredible.
Yeah, I have a sage plant, but it got annihilated. I also love sage. I really want to grow a bay plant. Not now. <laughs> Not now that it's starting to pour rain and shit, but... Who knows? Maybe it would do fine. Maybe it would love the winter. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. I don't know shit about bay plants. What did it in? Sage is usually hardy. Um, I never watered it. I got into a bad brain space and I stopped watering stuff. And it got really, really hot here. It could potentially still be alive. I plan to just kind of leave it and see if it comes back to life because a lot of stuff did from last year, but. <sighs> Bay is pretty hardy. My mom has some outside all year long. It seems to be okay. But that's like after it's like established roots and stuff, right? If I got like a baby bay plant, it probably wouldn't do amazing. Who knows? Again, I don't know shit about bay. I'll have to look it up. Bay is hardy. It grows in Portland weather, at least. Nice. I. What's in there? Oh. Hi, Sherlock. Hi, you, Bubba. The sock merchant. Yes, Sherlock the sock merchant. Hey, Bubba. Oop, wrong way. <laughs> Sherlock's like 11-ish. Something like that. Oh my god, my mother-in-law was saying that like... Her dog that's like four years old has all these heart problems and I was like... Isn't it really early for them to have heart problems? And she was like, no, this breed normally like lives to be around five. And if they get past five, then that's great. And I was like, what? It's a French Mastiff. I'm like, what? It feels like you just got her. And she was like, I know. I know, poor thing. Hi, Bubba. Mwah. Hi, sweet boy. Can you chill? It would be so lovely if you could lay down because your pin pick, your pin pricks of paws, they hurt. Did you know that? Did you know that they hurt? Are you forgiving me for uh, giving you flea medication? Are we like back on good terms or what? Are we okay? Oh, good. Oh, thank you. How sweet. Yeah, I guess French Mastiffs, like, almost always around five years old, either have a heart condition or get cancer. 
And if you have, if they live to like eight-ish or older, they ask that you like submit a bunch of information about it so that they can figure out why that dog lived longer, basically. He's 11. I think 11. When I got him, I got him end of 2011, I think, and he was already a year old. At least they think he was already a year old because he was at a shelter. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, depending on your cat, if they, or really, cat or dog, if, if they develop certain types of health issues, sometimes the vet can pinpoint like, oh, your cat probably has some of like this breed of cat in it, or dogs. Because some of them just like develop the same issues every time. Most cats that look, like most male cats that look like he does tend to be bigger. So I think that they almost always have an issue with like putting on a ton of weight <laughs> or just getting like large, you know? Um, and Watson looks exactly like a flame point Siamese, whether she's more than that or not, no idea, but. doesn't make sense. The math for what? For how old he is? Locale diet, but still big. It's just hormonally I mean there are plenty of humans that can be like trying to eat low calorie and not lose weight it's genetically they hold on to weight every vet I've taken him to has been like he will probably never lose this weight his body's just like built in a way where it wants to hold on to all of that for whatever reason whatever like advantage that gave the breed at one point <laughs> I 
I know. I mean, Sherlock and Watson eat the same amount and are about the same activity. And you've seen them. <laughs> you've seen the difference between the two of them. Huh. I'm so glad, Lapa. Tell him we love him. Chat loves you. Do you have a response? He's sending you something. I don't know what it is. The message isn't meant for me. But... Dignified cat silence and honor. <laughs> Truly, we are blessed. Uh, if we got a dog, it would not be my dog. I mean, like, you know, in the same way that I, I like to consider that Sherlock and Watson are all of our cats, they behave as though they are just my cats. <laughs> are you leaving? Um, out of everybody in this house, Sam is the one who desperately wants a dog. So, if we were to get a dog, Sam would be the one to name it. I would not name it. Do you have plans to always have cats, or will Watson and Sherlock be it? I have no idea. I do think about, specifically Sherlock, I think about him passing a lot. I think I try to like mentally prepare for that. I don't think that I would want to get another cat for a while. Yeah, press hard to continue is my YouTube channel. What's up? What animal would Clark want? Um, she really wants caterpillars, so I'm trying to find caterpillars that would be good to raise into moths. Um, she would love to have a spider. She's really into bugs. <laughs> We've talked about um, getting frogs, a little tank with frogs in it. Um, but really, the big things that I keep thinking about doing are like making a little terrarium with like a variety of buggies in it because I think she would love that. It would just have to be built in a way where she couldn't open it, where like I could be the only one that opens it. <laughs> but yeah. She lo yeah, she loves a ladybird. Big ladybird fan. Did you guys cultivate an interest in bugs and out of the ordinary animals or did she develop that all on her own? I mean, bugs wind up in the house all the time. And I think it's just probably the way that we treat the bugs in the house. It's very like, look, a bug. And we watch it and we, you know, if we feel comfortable with it, we'll pick it up and we'll look at it and we'll take it outside. And, you know, I think that, I think, yeah, it's something we've encouraged to a point of like, whoa, I haven't seen this kind of bug in the house before. Wow, look at that, it's got such pretty green wings. Wow, I wonder what that is, you know, that sort of thing. So, not the ants, although Clark loves the ants. I kill them when she's not around <laughs> because otherwise she gets upset. Yeah, they call them ladybirds here. I mean, sometimes they're ladybugs, but 
either either or works. Yeah, again, I we live in a place where any of the bugs that come in here are generally, like, not a big deal, right? Like, we don't live in a place with scorpions or centipedes or any of that sort of shit just showing up in the house. If you live in a place like that, my god, I would not do well with that. The bugs here are pretty low maintenance. They just kind of show up and you're like, what are you doing in here, you goofball? You pick it up and you put it outside and it's like no big. Hi, Dodger, I haven't been to the stream before, but I remember growing up with your videos and your collabs with Cox and Crendor. Do you still see and work with them? I do, I do, welcome, what's up? Yeah, I stream almost every day, so feel free to swing by anytime you like. Yeah, I talk with Jesse all the time. Um, I haven't done anything with Crendor in a long time, but Crendor is one of those people that you can like reach out to and have a convo and it feels like, it feels exactly like it was a year ago. Um, but Jesse and I talk every week. I literally just saw him actually. I live in England now and he and his parents came and visited uh, for like a week in London. So I, I went out to London to hang out with him for a day and that was very fun. Grender doesn't change, he's timeless. I would argue that he's that he changes, but like the vibe of Crendor is everlasting. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would say that really one of the big turning points for my for my channel, my Twitch channel was Undertale. Yeah, I've played hella Undertale. I've done all of the different possible runs you can do in Undertale and I have never played Deltarune. <laughs> I haven't played chapter one or two. I've been encouraged by people like Danny or Yozima um, and Besso and like other people like that have all been like, don't worry about streaming it. Just play it in your own time because I've avoided the shit out of it because I feel really guilty playing it off stream, but I also really do not want to play it on stream. So I need to just get over that. That's where I found you. I loved the genocide run. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we did the full genocide run. Why is that? Why would I not want to stream it? Um, because the Undertale community is really intense. Um, so even if I even if I did a thing like I'm just gonna put chat um, on emote only, I would I would be constantly distracted by knowing that a bunch of people are showing up and being like, she's playing it wrong. <laughs> I just don't want to be thinking about that. I want to be able to just enjoy it. Um, I was really lucky when Undertale came out in that Octo knows Toby Fox. And so when Undertale first came, literally the second it came out, Octo reached out to me and was like, yo, my friend Toby made this game. I think that you would love it. And so I streamed it before the fandom really got out of control. <laughs> um, so I got to have like a really pure for, like the sake of, you know, putting a word to it. I got to have a really pure experience with Undertale. Um, I didn't have a bunch of people in chat like mad at me about how I was playing or like insisting I do things a certain way, which is an issue now. People can't really play Undertale on stream without everybody showing up to be like, let's see if they do it right, etc. Maybe it's not as much of an issue now, but like at the height of the fandom, it was an issue. And it really ruined it for a lot of people who tried to stream it. So when Deltarune came out, I was like, I feel really guilty not streaming this because 
so many people found me through Undertale, which I can appreciate. And even some of you right now uh, are saying like, that's how you found me, which is amazing. I'm so glad that that's the case. Um, but at the same time, I know that I won't be able to have the same type of experience with Deltarune that I had with Undertale, where I get to just play it and enjoy it and like experience it with chat in like a really like fun, chill way, you know? So. It was bad on initial release. Do you think you would feel the same way if you played it off stream but recorded it? Um, it, I wouldn't, no, it, it wouldn't be the same, but I don't really record games anymore. I mean, I could, but. I found you through the Yogg's cast vid when Simon met you and Jesse. Aw. You mean the, the beard rubbing one? I had met them before. But that is the that's the day that I met Sam. For you know, for a little bit of lore. <laughs> Is it true that if their beards touch you, you find your true love? If anything, I nearly, I nearly escaped and would never have spent enough time with Sam for my my true ending. <laughs> oh, my mom loves listening with me when I put your streams on. Today's her birthday. Big love from Denmark. Hi, mom. Happy birthday. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out and watching me. That's so sweet. I hope you have an amazing day. How is Sam with his current four to 6 a.m. Pixelmon streams? It's par, that's par for the course in this house. So he's fine. He's, he woke up sick today though. So he's, he went back to bed. So we're fingers crossing that he wakes up and is like, I feel way better, <laughs> but normally when Sam's sick, if he wakes up, he'll just be like, well, I'm not gonna bother going back to sleep. I'll just sit and play a game, right? He got up, tried to eat something, sat down at his desk, and I wanna say like 20 minutes later, came upstairs and was like, no, I'm going back to bed. So I don't think he's feeling great, which is why I was like, I'm probably gonna stop stream about half an hour early and pick up Clark myself, cause if if Sam's feeling like shit, I don't wanna make him like get up and drive and stuff. <sighs> Sam just can't stay healthy. He's just always sick. I feel so bad for him. I'm an old school daily vlog viewer. It was awesome to meet you at GemuCon years ago. Oh my gosh, GemuCon! Yeah, that was that same trip. Well, thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Well, fortunately we have a bunch of soup left over so I can feed him soup if he wants it. <laughs> Sam works too hard. I agree, but you know, he's a grown man. Jim Pop, welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you very much. I appreciate the subscription. I hope you're having a good day. Yeah, I think, um, I think I'm gonna plan a, a little getaway for him and I force him to take a couple days off. Trask, thank you very much for the gifted subs. Welcome guys to the cat gang. I hope you're having a lovely day. 
Be sure to thank whoever gave you your gifted sub if you notice that you have one today. What kind of soup was it? It is um, butternut squash and cauliflower. It's an instant pot recipe and it's delicious. It's so good. I love it. It's soup season, it sure is. But I made a ton of it because I needed enough for us and also for my mother-in-law so that Clarky could be a soup fairy. Um, so. Is something different in the room today? Yes. But now it's a game. <laughs> That's one thing. The puzzle sitting on the cat tower. And the prints, yeah. I moved the this is this is the beginning of the transition into all of the orange toned prints that I have. We also, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's a pumpkin there that I guess is kind of covered up. And there's also Those have been there for a couple days, though. Ouch. The cats don't use this. They don't like it. So it's a shelf now. <laughs> Do you have plans for costumes? So I started looking at fabric for... Clark's favorite pretend game right now is to be um, Murcat from Gabby. So I was like, I wonder if I could make her a little Murcat outfit and like model it off of like mermaid costumes. I think that could be really cute. Murcat is a mermaid cat in a show called Gabby's Dollhouse um, that does science. So it'd be really cute if I could figure out how to do that. No DJ Catnip. I would have to be DJ Catnip. She's Murcat. I'm DJ Catnip. And Sam is Cat Rat, which I would argue that should be swapped and I should be Cat Rat and he should be DJ Catnip, but it is what it is. She's decided we've been assigned the roles and she will not change it. <laughs> but I do feel like a DJ Catnip outfit would be pretty easy. Um, because his, his leggies are just like striped colors. So just like a hoodie with like stripes on the arms and then like, and striped trousers. Um, and he basically wears a hoodie, DJ Catnip does. So then I would just need to make my face purple, I think. And, and blast music. And then I'd be good. We're going full PJ masks. That would be another easy one, yeah. We've all been assigned PJ masks in this house as well. I'm Gecko. You probably won't be surprised. And <laughs> Sleepy Tron just said, are you Gecko? I sure am. I sure am. Clarky is Owlet. Uh, Sam is Catboy. What's... <laughs> I don't remember what that kid's name is. And I'm Gecko. <laughs> My nephew loves PJ Masks, but he loves the evil girl. I like it. That's great. All this costume prep and Clark's going to change interest the day before. Honestly, I think any whatever I made her, she would be so jazzed. Like, so excited to have it. 
So, but Mercat is literally like every day she wants to play, she wants to play science and she's Mercat and I'm DJ Catnip and we decide on a science project and we pretend that we're doing science together. It's like a daily thing. So I think if I, if I made her a Mercat outfit, I think she would lose her mind. Hi, Joe. What's up, bud? Guys, if you didn't know, um, Joe was part of the D and D celebration on the the Twitch D and D channel and did a one shot in prep for some of his new stuff that he's working on called called Hermes Heist, and Sam was in it. Um, and you guys should go and watch it because it apparently turned out really fun. Joe's pretty cool. Joe is pretty cool. Joe, apparently you're a hot commodity. Uh, Brett, <laughs> I was talking with Brett about who I would love to play with in phase three for the IO stuff. And I was like, the two people, well, the three people that I've like talked with and would really love to play with again or play with for the first time are Jesse and Summer and Joe. And he was like, all right, well, um, you know, it sounds like a lot of people want to play with Summer and Joe. So and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Fine, I get it. I get it. Summer and Joe are really popular. It's fine. I don't have to play with them. <laughs> I believe the one shot is on the it was on the D and D channel, so Clouds. Hi, Queen. How have I never found your Twitch channel? I've been a big fan since the Press Heart to Continue days. Oh my gosh, so many people who watched Press Heart are showing up today. What's up, Clouds? Thanks for swinging by. Yeah, I stream almost every day. You should come hang out more often. I put you in my to play with again. Statistically, it should line up. That's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if I mention Jesse, I mean Jesse Cox. Yeah, uh, Joe, I was telling everybody that at the start of our last misdemeanor, Brett was like, I think you guys have like maybe four sessions left until misdemeanor is done. And I was like, that's fine. It's fine, we just need to make sure we save Wazy and then I'll just play Wazy, it's fine. <laughs> I haven't been here since that dating game with the animals. Which one? <laughs> Which one? I can't remember the name, but your character was McButt. Good times, I hope you're doing well. McButts, was that Hustle Cat? Was McButts Hustle Cat? Oh my god, I can't remember. Oh my god, was it Hotful Boyfriend? That's a long time ago. It could be Hotful Boyfriend. That's the pigeon one. It could be Hustle Cat, which is the the cat cafe one. Or it could be Dandelion. But I don't think we got to name ourselves in Dandelion. I don't think we named ourselves in Dandelion.
The magic school one? Oh my god. That wasn't an animal one, though. So that's not going to be it. Either way, regardless, what's up? <laughs> I I don't consistently play dating sims of the animal or not variety anymore, but um, sometimes, sometimes. My original username was Buttsack McButterstotch. I remember that name. That was a really good name. <laughs> when Sam joined us in Diablo 2, Zeus and I guessed he would make an Amazon and it would be called Samazon, and he did. <laughs> a classic goof. What kind of games do you play now? I play a lot of Metroidvanias and roguelites, um, puzzle games, uh, but really the stuff that really scratches the brain itches for me is like anything with a really big map on it. <laughs> Metroidvanias where I'm like, I can't even, why is this map so big? Love that shit. Um, and yeah, roguelites I really love. <laughs> Gotta love a big map. Uh, Pawnbarian, which is the game that we're playing today, is a chess-based roguelite. So that's what we're going to be doing pretty soon here. How did you find Eastward? Like, did I... How did I like it? I really liked it. I haven't played more of it yet. Arnar! Thank you so much for the gifted subs. Welcome to the cat gang, guys. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, be sure that you say thank you to whoever gifted you your sub if you noticed you were gifted a sub today. I got Poker Quest and it's awesome. It is, it's so fun! Poker Quest is great, big fan. If you're doing a new game every day, how many games do you have on your list? Um, yeah, somebody was like, so, you're planning like what game you're gonna play like all of the games for the week right like you make a list for the week <laughs> literally on the day that i'm gonna be playing i go and i go and look i look at my wish list to see if anything came out that's on my wish list and then i look at like uh recently released games and we also because people can suggest games through channel points i'll look at the channel point redemptions um but yeah, we play a different game every day now, which is very fun. I love Kana. Big fan of Kana. So, uh, yeah, everyone should play Kana. It's so good. <laughs> Are you gonna play the new Metroid when it comes out? Probably. There are a lot of games in the XL, yeah. But something that I don't think that we say often enough is um, if you want to suggest a game and you're like, ugh, what if somebody else already suggested this? Um, it, it adds a vote onto the game. So if, if you're, say that like five different people all suggest a Kena, in the, the Google Sheet, that Alex made, there's a tab that I can go to that's in order by votes. And so it will be on there as a game that has five votes to it. So I have installed Pawnbarian, thank you. Um, so if there's a game that you're really interested in me playing, uh, it is not a waste of channel points to suggest it, even if somebody else has. No, I don't play Pokemon games. I always try to play them. I always try I always try to like recapture the magic. Um, but I never enjoy Pokemon games anymore, unfortunately. Sam does. So I just live vicariously through Sam and he tells me about his life in the Pokemon universe. <laughs> Sam 
Sam got really into, I can't remember which one it was, but Sam gets really into the Pokemon breeding and like getting the right like, I don't know what it's called in the game, but the right like demeanor for like certain Pokemon and stuff like that. He gets really into that shit. So he's the person that some of our friends would go to and be like, man, I really need this Pokemon. And he'd be like, I have 300 of those. <laughs> Because I've been trying to get the correct nature for that exact Pokemon. <laughs> Would you like one? <laughs> Hi, John! How are you? Wingspan? You mean this? <laughs> I know there is a digital version. I haven't played it yet. Kana Bridge of Spirits is not on Steam. It's not. It's on Epic. Brett. He had hot takes on that tier list. What, Sam was making a tier list of Pokemon? I'm sure that went really well. I'm sure everybody agreed and had no dissenting opinions whatsoever about Pokemon of all things. <laughs> So many buds showing up in here. Never do a Pokemon tier list. Everyone has such vastly different opinions. I don't know shit about any Pokemon beyond like first gen, aside from Swadaloon, which is the best Pokemon. If I was to make a tier list, Swadaloon would be S tier and nothing else would be up there. <laughs> It was original 150. <gasps> I wanna I wanna do that tier list. I wanna do that tier list. I could do that one actually. It would it would not incorporate any of the things that anyone cares about. What gym leader type are you? Leaf. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is a swaddle And I looked it up. Correct. Objectively the best Pokemon. It's just an it's just an angry little leaf thing that has wrapped itself up in a blankie and is just begging for somebody to give it a cup of coffee so it can just sh sit there by itself. It's amazing. It's so grumpy. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, um, I'll be leaf, leaf trainer. Clarky can be the bug trainer. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to remember. It's it's a dragon that can't, that doesn't do anything to fairy type. Is that right? Because a long time ago, I asked Sam this, and he was like, um, he was like, I would be a dragon trainer but then you would have to be a fairy trainer. And I was like, why? And he was like, because I could never hurt you. And it was so smooth. <laughs> and I didn't understand Pokemon well enough to understand how smooth it was. He had to explain that to me. <laughs> I 
but it's very good. can't dragons hurt fairy types i don't know it's just like on the on the type tree right of like what types are weak to other types etc etc i think fairy type for whatever reason is immune to dragon type i don't know why They just needed to balance out the dragons. Dragons were OP. So, so fairies. <laughs> Charizard is not a dragon. Is it not? It's a dinosaur. Ah, dinosaur type. My favorite. <sighs> yeah, there's a ton of... How many Pokemon are there lots of people looking this up there are 898 pokemon currently counting only distinct species of pokemon within these 59 are legendary you could count differently and include different forms of pokemon as separate entries in which case there would be more make that tier list <laughs> no longer feel like feel bad about not remembering them it's so crazy isn't it to think about like any of us who who played first gen how obsessed we all were with pokemon i i had every single pokemon memorized um at the time i i was drawing all the time that was around the age when i was like still doing art constantly i could draw all of them from memory i knew everything about them i had so much fun playing the game and I have never even remotely reached that level in any version since then <laughs> Pokemon Blue was it for me apparently everything that came after that I had zero interest in and I don't know why shout out to the other blue players <laughs> played red and then yellow but yellow is the worst you have to take care of whiny pikachu i was so jealous of all of my friends who had yellow i was like oh. <laughs> past the top of the hour it's time for us to play a game so uh we're gonna go take a break so if you need to grab a drink or go pee or whatever um i might see if there's an easy snack for me somewhere in the house we're gonna run some ads all of your eyeball money goes to a good cause we donate all of our ad money every month so check that out if you'd like uh but otherwise when we come back we'll play pondbarian <laughs> i'm very excited
Hello. Y'all ready? I highly doubt <laughs> that there are warnings for Pondberrian. <laughs> but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Yes, they are plain tortillas. No, I don't put anything on them. Yes, I've been doing this my whole life. Good game, I guess. Okay, there are other classes, interesting. I guess we'll just learn as we go, right? Tutorial Island! Embark! Hover over anything to see a description. Cappy Bear! Each turn you play cards to move and attack with your hero, with the same pattern as the shown chess piece. Oh, so I move like a pawn, I guess. You have two moves each turn, shown under the board on the right side. Play the two pawns to continue. you run out of moves so okay interesting so the pieces that show up are acting kind of like almost like a deck builder i guess we're like we have a bunch of chess pieces that can come up and that's those are the ways in which our barbarian can move right after you run out of moves, it's the monster's turn. They try to attack your hero and then they move. You ended your turn in range of the Cappy Bear, so you were attacked and got damaged. Red notches on the board show squares targeted for attack. Use the knight and jump to the top row. You promoted one of your pawns into a queen. Why? Oh, promote a pawn when you move to the top row. Or start your turn in the top row. Or have three pawns in your hand. Okay. Hover over your hero. Promotion happens to the rightmost promotable card. Okay. Cards stay promoted until played. Or until the end of a floor. If you don't play it right away, you might draw it later during the floor. Attack enemies by moving into them, just like capturing pieces in chess. Kill all enemies on the floor. Let's go. Take a look above the board. The bag shows your current gold. 
Everything to the right of it is loot you gather after winning the floor. The crystal heals a point of damage. The gold goes straight into your bag, which you'll use in a second. The rightmost piece of loot is lost each turn. Finishing a floor in fewer turns mean you gain more stuff. You also gain a piece of gold from each enemy you kill. Okay. So this is like, what do you want to buy, I guess? What are you buying? Move into things to buy them. There's no move limit in the shop. Buy an upgrade. Uh... card can have multiple upgrades. Play with a small fixed deck of cards, which is reshuffled anytime it's empty. Getting hearts and upgrades is how you improve your hero. Buy anything else you'd like and go down the stairs. Stairs in the top row of the board. Go down the stairs in the top row of the board. What? Oh, this? Oh my god. Okay, so I have a point of shield now. Ooh, interesting. have to conquer a dungeon to get another class. That's fine. Let's go. Oh. What's this? Gain an action and draw a card.
Okay, so I'm starting off with some stuff already, like... Leveled up, I guess. Give my bishop some shield, that would be nice. <clears throat> what do they got? Dodges the first attack each turn if able. Oh, so they'll back up, I guess. I guess that's why it says if able. So that's the only safe place. <laughs> so I'm gonna do two moves. So I can move here. Kill, oops, just kidding. Right, because they dodged the first attack. Each turn though, God. Okay, this might take me a little bit to get used to. <laughs> if other enemies are alive. On death, make the hero draw only up to two cards next turn. because they're ranged, right?
to go up. I keep I have to remember that the pawns can only move in one direction because I'm not remembering that. They all nimble. Blights adjacent squares after death. <sighs> Immune while the hero is not in any of the adjacent squares. Okay. So this is something I have to, yeah, okay. So it's always attacks to them, which makes sense. I just wanted to double check it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Blight.
He's the only one, though, that has nimble. So as long as I can hit stuff, we Gucci. It's just after move. Okay, just after moving. So I can just keep adding stuff onto these. There isn't like a an upgrade limit, I guess. I'm gonna assume that you can only put two upgrades on each thing, but. You know what they say about assuming. I don't think I got hit once. <sighs> Damn. Wait, let's see. No, you can just keep adding shit. Full. Lights adjacent squares.
lot of shit just then. There's still one over there. Fuck. And I'm in flight. I think I'm gonna die. Well, let's see. Two damage, one from blight. Right, so the number of spikes mean how much damage you're gonna take. I only have one health anyway. And skulls mean you'll die. my first death and so you just start over okay 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 I'm understanding the game better now none of y'all have nimble what a blessing supposed to okay got nimble. That's fun. <laughs> That's very fun.
Oh, I should have gone the other way. So then I could have. It's okay. Oops. Oh, I can only go forward, right? There we go. Okay, I didn't get much money out of that. But I still didn't get hit, which is the point. <laughs> to me. That's the point to me. because he's immune. Zymes! I don't know if that's how you're supposed to pronounce your name, but welcome to the cat gang. Thank you very much. All right, first damage of the run. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> oh, shit. God, I'm really in this, aren't I? Here we go. Wow, I got to the last floor last time then. So that's good. That's nice, that's good. I like that.
shit, right? I forgot he had nimble. Oh, fuck my life. <laughs> he has nimble and I can't be next to him. What a bitch. was next to him. Whatever. Oh! Adjacent. I was Diag. Got it. I guess just give everything shields, right? Just shields for days. Shields for days. Everybody- You get a shield! And you get a shield! <laughs> Protecteth me from danger. Take that.
energy is worth a lot, apparently. Somebody said they remember playing this as a flash game. Was this originally a flash game? That got like cleaned up and turned into a a big game? Or Oof, that's a lot of hits. Ooh, that's a lot of nuts. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this and then this, I think. deep in the shit now. to remember when I have shields. Cardinally, cardinally adjacent is this, right? Left, right, up, down. Shield everything. <laughs> oh, north, south, east, west. The cardinal directions. For some reason, I was not thinking about that. Floor seven, final floor, me think. Haha, <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Neat. gonna do with all that junk get hit a couple times maybe <laughs> fuck around and get hit a few times
me a pawn. Yes! That's just the bitch I was looking for. Ah, immune. Well, <gasps> shit. I really like this game, but who asked me anyways? No, it's good to hear what you guys think about the games. I'm enjoying myself. You know, in case anybody cared. I'm having fun. And I don't know shit. Like I know how chess works. And that's where and that's where it ends, right? Like I know what all the pieces do. And that's it. Thank you, Dad, for teaching me what the pieces do when I was a wee bab. hit once and gain health back. I think I gain health back like one health after each round, I think. Shields? Okay. No, it's fine. I didn't want shields anyway. I hate shields. <laughs> Shout out, my dad also taught me what the pieces do, and I pretty much forgot most of it by now. Yeah. I know how to make the I know how to move the pieces. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that's the case because I spent so long when we first started playing this game being like, the pawns can't move backwards. <laughs> but like, I, I remember what all the pieces do, right? Strategy? I don't know her. Lego chess was a great teacher of chess to me. I'm not even joking. It goes through all the basics and special moves. That's great. That's so great. I love that.
yeah. 14 gold. We got one health back. And some shields, finally. Okay, so. You, ma'am. You, ma'am. Great. That was a mistake. <laughs> wow, what a mistake. I pretend I do not see. really good at it. God damn. Wow. Who knew? <laughs> A savant. Yeah, you basically, like, this is like your deck. Um, you start off with a bunch of chess pieces. Uh, they pop up like cards. And you can apply upgrades to them. After each floor, you get an opportunity to upgrade, so it's pretty generous that way. Um... You can give them shields, you can make it so they attack like in specific directions, or give you more energy. Um, so... I would really like to have more shields on things, please! Please! So this is the second to last floor. We keep getting to the last floor and then hosing it, so we'll see.
Oh man. Okay, wait. not a great situation to be going into floor seven with, but it is what it is. Get a little health. If this one pawn shows up, then I'm gold. <laughs> I say this, but... <laughs> Plan that out badly. Again. Okay. Oh no, that's not what I should have done. Well, it's too late now. Shit, or is it? Again. Man, it's always different. I should have just stuck with it. But here we are. Living in a material world. I'm gonna get hit anyway. Might as well kill one. Bah, bah, 
Got about an hour left of the stream. For sure, yeah. Like, each error can really mess up the whole thing. I like it. Okay, back to full health. You got muns. <laughs> Seeing the title of the game, I thought it would be a barbarian running a pawn shop, but this also makes sense. A barbarian running a pawn shop is also a good concept for a game. <laughs>
light. Okay. Hella health. Just get hella health. Hi. Hi, everybody. So good to see all of you. Yeah, it's a combat puzzle game. we do it can we unlock a new class I think maybe we just can smarter, not harder, <laughs> etc. I see. <laughs> oh, I see what this is now. Oh, I understand what we're doing. <laughs> Sometimes things are just misunderstandings. <laughs> and if we just talk about it, 
sometimes we'll realize, you know, that maybe... Uh... Stuff is fine? Maybe? Doctor. Jesus Christ. Well, did I? I have the boy! Okay. No access to the cantrip upgrade. Trigger cantrip when two knights are played on the same turn. Oh, interesting. So if I play two knights, I have a fuckload of knights. Okay. So if I play two knights in the same turn, I get energy. Interesting. Okay. Let's see then. Oh, good. I have no pawns. My body. Okay. Yeah, put shields on all my horses. 
All My Horses, the new hit soap opera. There we go. Well, this is dumb. <laughs> can't end adjacent to him, but he moves so that I'm adjacent. Because he's an AI. <laughs> Here we go. No! I'm still able to afford an upgrade, so I will call it good.
I'll get health back here now. Great. I don't know what's happening, but it's cool. So basically, um, it's a it's a puzzle strategy game. Uh, <laughs> much like chess. Anyways, so uh, you have a bunch of chess pieces. They're different depending on the class that you play. We are currently the Knight Templar, so he has a ton of knights. Um, each of the classes uh, operate a bit differently, but the pieces that you have pop up kind of deck builder style. So these are like the cards representing the piece. They represent ways in which you as your character can move and attack. Um, this is how much energy you have. This is how much health you have. And then you can upgrade your pieces. So all of these pieces that have popped up all have shields. So when I use them, I will be able to block one damage. So if I, if I, I only have two energy, so I'll only be able to use two of these, but I'll get two shields out of it. Um, and again, because they all operate differently, so like the first original class, you can upgrade things to give you energy. The Knight Templar doesn't let you do that, but there is an element to him where if you use two knights in a row, you get extra energy. So it's just, yeah, it's it's a, a, a strategy battle game that uses chess elements, basically. Um, and it's also uh, roguelike-y. Anyways, let's get cracking, I guess. Do I have to use them in a row? Two knights played on the same turn. Okay. <gasps> oh, right. Yeah, I planned that poorly. I was distracted. All right, well. Okay. Next floor is final. Oh my god, we're there already? Okay. The red arrows show you how many hits you're going to take if you land on that spot. So if nothing changes about this board and I stay here, I will die. Skulls mean you die. Um, three spikes means three hits, one spike means one hit, two spikes means two hits. Keep in mind, some of these guys have a quality called nimble if they've got the swirlies around them. Um, it means that if I try to attack them, they will move away if possible. If I attacked diagonally to hit this guy, um, he would try to move this way. There would be nowhere for him to go, so he would die. But if this was open, he would move, and it would change where he was attacking. So the board is in flux. It's not. Ne this isn't necessarily what's going to happen, but if everything stays the same, then that is what will happen. Anywho, let's go here, because he can't move that way, and he can't move that way. Oh, but he does have immunity if I'm next to him. Well, what's digging? Who 
Who's hitting that? You? Oh. But I'll have a barrier. I'm fine. I didn't die though! Get me out of here. <laughs> Yay! Now I can use the Shogun. Promote a card the first time you move. You can use a dragon drop action, which charges whenever you kill an enemy with a normal move. Sure, what's that like? Sure. Oh no. Is it Shogi instead of, oh my God. No! <laughs> it's shogi pieces instead of chess pieces. I don't know what the fuck any of this shit does. Oh, fuck me. Okay. Well. Interesting. Okay, interesting. Oh my gosh. Summer, I don't know if I'm weeb enough. <laughs> I'm a we I don't know if I'm weeb enough, Summer. Hi, Jossum! Hi, Summer. You've shown up in my time of need. So all of these pieces can move to all of these places. And my first move will upgrade that card, I believe is what it said.
I mean, like, at least it shows me where I can move, but... So these are basically pawns. my inner Shikamaru. Oh my god, I can't even afford anything. The game's like, better luck next time. <laughs> turn that uses energy interesting i guess it it must <laughs> it would be weird if it didn't Let's try Pondarian again and do a different, a different fortress. Okay, it's almost five. Oh, what are you? Oh my God, there's robots here. Shit, dude. Leaves blight when it moves. Blights all adjacent squares after a cantrip. Ooh! That's interesting. Interesting. Spark Imp triggers all spark traits, moves after a cantrip, gains immune. Meanwhile, the hero is in any of the cardinally adjacent squares, gains immune until 
next turn after it. Oh my god, you really don't want to be using energy in this, do you? It's not even showing that I have energy. Wait, are they giving me energy? <laughs> oh my god. Bro! Stuck. Not like this, dude. Okay, well, you know what? You know what? energy and Yakuza went into trying to learn Mar Mahjong. <laughs> huh. Mahjong is also very hard. At least like the way that Final Fantasy 14 tries to teach you Mahjong is so hard. I got really interested in Shogi uh, because of Naruto. There's no shame. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> here? No shame. I got really I uh, got really interested in Shogi because of Naruto. Um and then what was that other anime that was entirely about Shogi? Or no, it was Go. Hikaru no Go. I got really interested in Go because of Hikaru no Go. So I started watching other people play them because I knew they were close enough to chess that I was probably never going to be able to figure them out because chess was also beyond me. <laughs> yeah, because of the best character. Shikamaru. The king. Does he leave behind Blight? No. He does? They do. Got it. Cool. There aren't as many rules to learn, but Go is so complex that it took computers longer to master. Interesting.
Doing better this time. Doing better this time. Okay. Are you? Oh. Hmm. Okay, well, that sucks. Yeah, everybody move, everybody move, I guess. I thought I was gonna die. I'm in danger. <laughs> what? That's it, they're both immune. Stupid. I first 
tried Mahjong in Final Fantasy XIV, the game took a long time to finish. That is still how it is. I occasionally will try to play Mahjong just to fill out my like a achievements for the week thing at the Gold Saucer. It takes hours to get a game. Like at least a couple of hours for me to get a game and then the game itself takes forever. <laughs> Anyways, I'm in danger. Let's go. understand why I get hit before the actual hits of the square. I need to read those cards better, I guess. Okay, this might be our last run. after a cantrip. Okay, that's why. Why did I do that? No! Well, oh, what are you? <laughs> Attacks after a cantrip. Shit. Why did I do that? Is it that they'll only attack where they can hit, though? It might be only if they can hit.
Okay, so this will be the this will be the true test. He's supposed to attack after a cantrip. So if I kill this guy, will he only attack in his zone? Okay. Got it. Got it. feels very Star Wars. <laughs> we are going to fight the Empire. I thought it was a new turn! I thought it was a new turn, it wasn't. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. It was not. Hey, one more. <laughs> hey, let's try one more time. stuck I'm really glad no hold on one hold on no I literally can't play more than one
attacks after a cantrip. And you, attacks after a cantrip. After death triggers all spark traits. Okay. Oops. Well. Are any of these cantrips? It's not just energy, it's any cantrip. It's any like a power, I guess. going well. This is a fun game. We're exercising our brains a bit, which is always good. What a pain in the ass. There we go. Floor six, floor six, floor six, floor six. Oh, because there's no one to it. Oh, my God.
because it's a blight spot, I see. Fucking blight now. <sighs> Final floor. It ain't happening, but we will have done our best. No, stop moving. Spawns a guard golem on an empty adjacent square after a cantrip. So again, are these all cantrips? Because it shows the bolt. Which to me means they only care about the bolt because they're electric shit, right? Interesting. So see, that counted as a cantrip. no matter what I think. Oh. God. I think that I will get a 
attacks after a, a cantrip. <sighs> These are all cantrips, so I have to stay in here somehow. But I don't think I can. going around in circles, dude. <laughs> nope. But hey. It's a fun game, I think. Pondarian. Um, I played it on Steam. It might be available other places. I honestly don't know. But it's got very good reviews. Uh, it's a pretty nice, like, simple puzzle game. So that was fun. It looks hard. Honestly, I think, like, maybe it looks hard. But I think that the logger, if you're playing it, things make a bit more sense, maybe. And, like, I mean, we played with the class that had shogi pieces, and I don't know shogi, and I can't read kanji, and, like, <laughs> I had no idea what any of the pieces were, but because the game shows you, like, where that piece can go, like, it doesn't, it doesn't let you try to make a move that you can't make, you know? So even if you don't necessarily know how to play chess or you're not super strong on, like, what moves are allowed in chess... Um, it's not going to let you do a thing that you can't do, you know? It's a lot of just, like, making sure that you read what you can do and what your enemy can do and then planning accordingly. So it's fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's read everything off. We have a bunch of Valentines today. Uh, Arnar said, heading off to the sea in the evening. I got to get going to make it through the snow. Always fun to hang out with here with you, Dodger, fellow mods, and good folks in chat. I'll catch y'all sometime in November. I'll have to be Yarnar until then. Be safe, Arnar. I know that you're gone already, but it's always lovely to have you around. Uh, oh, sorry. One sec. Yeah, Sam's still feeling real rough. Okay, King's Warrior. A bunch of Valentines from King's Warrior. Oh my goodness. Sending love and hugs to anyone who needs one. Had a bad week last week. My mental health took a nosedive because of a medication change. I experienced what depression is really like. It hit me so hard. I never realized what people who deal with depression and anxiety go through. It was very eye-opening. If you're sad, I'm sorry. If you're anxious, I'm sorry. If you're feeling hopeless, I'm sorry. I'm here cheering you on and rooting for you. And this Valentine goes out with mad love and respect to the amazing mods in chat, Amarian and Arnar and Alex and all the others who do an incredible job of keeping the chat spoiler and speculation free while interacting with us and enjoying the game. I swear they must have ninja reflexes. Sometimes they move so swiftly and mightily. Even though I've had gripes about the rules in the past, the mods are just enforcing the rules and they deal with a lot of flack that they don't deserve. This Valentine goes out to Dodger. Thanks for being such a fun, entertaining streamer. You've crafted an incredible community. They are so loving and supportive and kind and incredible. Thank you for playing so many fun games and for appreciating everyone, sub and non-sub alike. You're one of a kind, and I appreciate you so much. Your streams are a light and a very dark place, so thank you for streaming. Kings Warrior, these are all such sweet messages. And this Valentine goes out to a special person, someone who often watches Dodger's older VODs on YouTube. I'm so grateful to Besso for all the incredible music he found and put together for Dodger's streams. Even years later, the music he chose gets me hyped up for streams, and he had the best taste in music. I know he isn't doing this job anymore, but he still deserves hype and love, and thanks for all that he did. So thanks, Besso. Thanks, Besso. 
Um, and this Valentine goes out to all the cutie patooties in chat who gift subs. I'm in awe of your generosity and kindness. Thank you for inve investing in the streams in such a thoughtful way. I know Dodger really appreciates every gift sub that's given, and I appreciate them too. Thank you for gifting subs. You're wonderful. Those were all from King's Warrior. What lovely messages. Thank you so much. Um, and Askugia says, it's my birthday today. I hope everyone has had a good day. Happy birthday, Askugia. Um, all right. We had a raid leader. So let's make sure that they're still alive. They are wonderful. And... Here we go. Maddie Dew, thank you for the 26 months. PZN for the 56. So bad at games for the 32. Dr. Jazzfist for the 49. Sapphire Scale for the 6. Weird Uncle J for the 62. Tagalongs for the 26. Tea Time Rebel for the 51. Zerobus for the 8. Rafid for the 53. Kaisenel for the 80. Kirosan for the 71. Moro Crow for the 2 years. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much for all the support. Uh, SLM Happy Day, thank you for the four. Virusen, thank you for gifting a sub. Patience for the one year. Happy anniversary, thank you so much. Uh, Bluffles, thank you for the four. Twin Peaks for the 13. Bold Garlic for the 23. Emmett Newman for the nine. Happy Twitch Baby. Wild Turkey for the 50. I'm just a kid for the 46. Closter says for the 87. K11 Paws for the 40. Puff Maggie for the 16. Mr. Maxwell MSG for the 20. Brunero Bread for the 65. Amici for the 31. Bailey for the 58. Amariel for the 70. Amarien for the 55. Goodness gracious. Diagonal Dylan for the 6. Spiral Phoenixes for the 14. Bakovic for the 32. April for the 39. Molly Bree for the 20. Oblivious to me. Thank you again for all the gifted subs. Tianmar for the 58. Um, Jim Pop, thank you for subscribing again. Welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you, thank you. Trask, thank you for the gifted subs as well. Kayla Grubbs for the two. Broken Plaything for the 64. Level 1 Mob for the four. W Tile for the four years. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. Aniki V0 for the 10. Arnar and Lumi Freya, thank you very much for the gifted subs. Uh, Clara's Day Sky for the 22, the Trent for the 17, Midna for the 7, Ascugia for the 22, San Paige, thank you for the 3, uh, Miroth for the 58, Toachmeister for the 17, Justin Jar Jar for the 9, Happy Twitch Baby, um, Zymes, again, welcome to the Cat Gang, thank you, Jerfy Jerf for the 76, Tedro for the 4, Maddie MS for the 47, uh, JW Healer, thank you for the 3, Zaki Khan for subscribing, welcome to the Cat Gang, thank you. Hypixion for the 74, Astro Moon for the 56, Hybrid Bassist for the 5, Soul Edgar for the 73, Board Geek for the 88, Druid Dust for the 14, Nelly G for the Gifted Sub, and Dahobo for the 21. Thank you all very much. We're going to raid Nom Nom Ninja. Spread love, spread joy, have fun. Uh, I'm, I don't think that I'm streaming tomorrow. Wait, did that raid not work? There we go. How weird. Anyways, uh, cool. I don't think that I'm streaming tomorrow because I think I'm I'm doing an Endwalker thing. Uh, but if I am, I'll let you know. And otherwise, uh, I'll either see you tomorrow night or I'll see you on Thursday. Okay? Fantastic. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.